In an era marked by evolving threats and complex geopolitical dynamics, Israel's commitment to safeguarding its borders and citizens remains unwavering. Iran attacked Israel last night with some 330 cruise missiles, drones, and ballistic missiles. This latest defense system represents a significant leap forward in Israel's defense capabilities, poised to redefine modern warfare. What makes Israel's $500 million defense system stand out among existing technologies? And how does it address contemporary security challenges? Join us as we decode Israel's defense system in modern welfare. Israel has been involved in a series of conflicts. As a country situated in a geopolitically volatile region, Israel finds itself surrounded by hostile neighbors, each potentially a missile launch away from sparking a conflict with nations openly opposed to its existence. Israel's proximity to its adversaries has generated an ongoing threat of missile attacks. In response, the nation has developed a state-of-the-art defense shield, a powerful anti-missile system capable of operating around the clock and effectively countering high-speed missiles. This technological marvel not only safeguards its skis, but also serves as a symbol of resilience and innovation. How daunting is Israel's air defense system? What are the potential consequences of Israel's latest progress in the defense of its military capabilities? Well, we'll soon find out. Since Israel's declaration of independence in 1948, the country has been involved in a series of conflicts and has employed various weapons to defend its borders. In the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, Israel relied on surplus World War II-era arms, mainly small arms, mortars, and basic armored vehicles. In the 1956 Suez Crisis, Israel, along with France and the UK, initiated a campaign against Egypt, showcasing the Israeli Air Force's strength operating various aircraft. British-made Centurion tanks were key to Israel's ground forces. The 1967 Six-Day War brought significant change, with Israel's victory partly attributed to French Mirage three fighter jets, ensuring air superiority. The war also featured the use of Soviet-made T-54 and T-55 tanks. The 1973 Yom Kippur War introduced advanced weaponry, including American-supplied fighter aircraft, underscoring the importance of anti-tank missiles, particularly the Soviet RPG-7 rockets in the hands of Arab forces. Fast forward to the 1990s, a tumultuous period when Hezbollah, situated in Lebanon, rained rockets into northern Israel population centers, presenting an acute and unexpected security challenge for the Israel Defense Forces, IDF. Hezbollah fighters say they targeted an Israeli base and air defense post. The continuous threat from these rocket attacks compelled Israeli authorities to contemplate the development of a short-range anti-missile system. However, as discussions surrounding this project unfolded, U.S. defense officials voiced valid concerns. The creation of a formidable anti-missile defense system was no small feat, raising questions about budget constraints and the substantial resources it would necessitate. In response to these challenges, Israel's Ministry of Defense embarked on an arduous journey of research and development. This endeavor was marked by tireless dedication and collaboration among experts, which eventually culminated in the blueprint for what would become the Iron Dome. This groundbreaking defense system not only represents Israel's unwavering commitment to safeguarding its citizens, but also stands as a testament to its capacity for innovation and adaptability in the face of evolving security threats. The battle management of the Iron Dome. The momentum for the Iron Dome project began to build in 2004 when Brigadier General Daniel Gold assumed leadership of the Research and Development Division of the Israel Defense Forces. Gold was a staunch advocate for the anti-missile project, going so far as to circumvent army procurement regulations to secure funding. He also played a crucial role in rallying political support for the initiative. During the 2006 Second Lebanon War, roughly 4,000 rockets fired by Hezbollah struck northern Israel, including Haifa, the nation's third largest city. This rocket barrage resulted in the deaths of 44 Israeli civilians and prompted about 250,000 Israeli residents to evacuate and relocate to other areas within the country. 
Approximately 1 million Israelis found themselves confined to bomb shelters or areas nearby during the conflict. In the southern region, more than 8,000 projectiles were indiscriminately launched into Israel from Gaza between 2000 and 2008, primarily by Hamas. The vast majority of these rockets were fired from 122 millimeters, grad launchers that had been smuggled into the Gaza Strip, granting them greater range compared to other launching methods. This situation posed a substantial security threat to the country and its citizens, with nearly a million Israelis in the southern region falling within the rocket range. In February 2007, Defense Minister Amir Peretz chose the Iron Dome as Israel's defense solution against this short-range rocket menace. Since then, the $210 million U.S. dollar system has been developed through the collaborative efforts of Rafael Advanced Defense Systems and the IDF. The Iron Dome, a remarkable creation of Israel's defense industry, is a sophisticated system engineered to detect and eliminate various aerial threats, including short-range rockets, artillery shells, and ballistic missiles. Since its initial deployment, the Iron Dome has earned a reputation for its exceptional success in intercepting incoming threats, effectively protecting Israeli civilians and vital military assets from the perils of rocket and missile attacks. Fundamentally, the primary mission of the Iron Dome is to intercept and neutralize immediate threats posed by short-range projectiles swiftly. These threats typically consist of rockets and 155 meters artillery shells with a range of up to 70 kilometers, roughly equivalent to 43 miles. What sets the Iron Dome apart is its unwavering operational effectiveness, irrespective of external conditions such as day or night, adverse weather, or the simultaneous presence of multiple threats. This adaptability and reliability underscore its significance in the field of missile defense, especially in safeguarding Israeli territories and their inhabitants. At its core is the detection and tracking radar, a fundamental component that acts as the system's vigilant eye, collaboratively developed by ELTA, an Israeli defense company, and a subsidiary of Israel Aerospace Industries and the Israel Defense Forces. This radar system has the crucial task of detecting the launch of incoming threats and continuously tracking their flight paths. It provides precise data forming the foundation upon which the Iron Dome's interception calculations are based. The Battle Management and Weapon Control Center stand as the strategic nerve center of the Iron Dome. Crafted through the collaborative efforts of Rafael and Elta Systems, an Israeli software company, this command hub orchestrates the system's every move. It skillfully processes the data received from the radar, meticulously evaluating the trajectory of identified threats. It is within the BMC that the precise moment for a missile launch is determined based on the imminent threat's trajectory. It is the operational brain behind the system's rapid, precise, and highly effective defense mechanism. The final piece in this puzzle is the missile firing unit, which plays a pivotal role in intercepting incoming threats. Its main responsibility is to launch the Tamir interceptor missile. The Tamir missile, crafted by Rafael, features advanced electro-optic sensors and multiple steering fins, providing exceptional maneuverability and precision. Typically, within each Iron Dome battery, you can find three to four launchers, each containing up to 20 interceptor missiles. This setup effectively showcases the system's impressive capability to manage multiple engagements simultaneously, highlighting its significance in missile defense. The effectiveness of the Iron Dome is intricately woven into its seamless operational process, demonstrating the harmonious integration of technology and coordination. The system's radar, the ELM-2084, is the ever-watchful sentinel in the skies. It continuously scans the airspace, aiming to detect the launch of incoming threats and capture crucial initial trajectory data. This data is crucial for the system's precise interception calculations. Once the radar has furnished the necessary data, the Battle Management and Weapon Control Center comes into play. It processes the information received from the radar, meticulously evaluating the trajectory of the identified threat. This thorough assessment is a crucial checkpoint, determining whether the threat genuinely poses a risk 
to a designated area. The system triggers the launch of interceptor missiles only when a legitimate threat is confirmed. In the event of a confirmed threat, the Iron Dome promptly springs into action. An interceptor missile is swiftly launched to intercept and neutralize the incoming threat before it reaches its predicted impact area. The remarkable maneuverability of the Tamer missile allows for precise interception, enhancing the system's overall effectiveness. What sets the Iron Dome apart from traditional air defense missile systems is its innovative deployment pattern. In contrast to centralized systems where all components are clustered together, the Iron Dome deploys in a decentralized manner. Each launcher operates autonomously and can be remotely managed through a secure wireless connection. This decentralized configuration gives the system enhanced flexibility and adaptability, making it exceptionally responsive to evolving threat scenarios. Remarkably, reports indicate that each Iron Dome battery can protect an urban area spanning approximately 150 square kilometers, underscoring its impressive coverage capacity. This decentralized approach aligns perfectly with the Iron Dome's core objective uh, to deliver comprehensive and effective protection against various evolving aerial threats. However, on October 7, 2023, Israel was caught off guard by a very large-scale missile attack by the Gaza-based Palestinian militant group Hamas. The group fired several thousand missiles at several targets across Israel. According to reports, while exact details are not available, it is clear that over 3,000 rockets penetrated the Israeli defense and killed an estimated 1,300 Israelis. In response to this attack, Israel swiftly launched a counteroffensive and formally declared war against Hamas the following day. Israel has made the strategic decision to introduce its new advanced laser defense system into the ongoing conflict. Israel's venture into laser weaponry commenced during the mid-1970s, when its military specialists identified the potential of lasers to enhance their defense capabilities. Working in partnership with key Israeli defense firms such as Israel Aerospace Industries and Rafael, they embarked on a mission to explore the practical practical uses of laser technology in defense. Their initial focus centered on grasping the fundamental principles of laser weaponry and exploring potential defense applications. Given their limited resources and relatively basic understanding of lasers at the time, their primary emphasis was research resulting in the development of rudimentary prototypes. An early, significant achievement was successfully testing the first gas dynamic laser in 1976, producing approximately 10 kilowatts of power. The turning point for Israel. Despite the challenges and intricacies, this laid a solid foundation for future laser weapon advancements keeping alive the vision of employing high-energy lasers in defense and serving as a source of inspiration for the Israeli defense industry. The turning point came in the 1982 Lebanon War, which introduced precision-guided munitions as a pivotal strategic asset, signifying a shift toward more advanced and precise weaponry. In the mid-1990s, Israel began its second major venture into laser weaponry, collaborating with the U.S. Israel initiated a promising combat laser system project with the primary goal of creating a close-zone missile defense laser system employing chemical laser technology based on deuterium fluoride. The system was projected to generate up to 2 megawatts of power, sufficient for intercepting artillery shells and unguided rockets in mid-flight. In 2014, the Israeli Defense Corporation, Rafael, unveiled the Iron Beam, known as Karen Barzel in Hebrew, and officially labeled as Magen Or, or Light Shield. It stands as an innovative directed energy weapon air defense system, with its primary mission revolving around intercepting and neutralizing short-range threats, encompassing rockets, artillery, and mortar shells, with an impressive operational range extending up to 7 kilometers. It complements the Iron Dome, which specializes in intercepting missiles launched from greater distances. The Iron Beam's versatility also extends to countering unmanned aerial vehicles, solidifying its position as the sixth vital component within Israel's integrated missile defense system alongside Arrow 2, Arrow 3, David's Sling, and Iron Dome. The Iron Beam system employs a fiber laser to create a directed energy beam. It can operate independently, 
or as part of a larger air defense configuration. The process entails threat identification through a surveillance system and vehicle platform tracking to initiate engagement. The distinct advantages of directed energy weapons like the iron beam over traditional missile interceptors lie in their cost efficiency, ability to fire continuously, reduced operational costs, and minimal human intervention. Additionally, they eliminate the issue of interceptor debris, mitigating the risk of debris falling into protected areas. Each interception becomes significantly more economical, costing approximately 2,000 US dollars per shot compared to the 100,000 US dollars to 150,000 US dollars per interceptor fearing associated with conventional systems. In 2016, it was reported that the power levels of the iron beam's laser were in the tens of kilowatts range, although specific details were not publicly disclosed. Estimates made in 2020 suggested that the iron beam could effectively engage targets up to seven kilometers away, destroying missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles, and mortar shells within roughly four seconds of contact employing its twin high-energy fiber optic lasers. Looking ahead to 2023, there are expectations that energy levels may surpass 100 kilowatts, allowing the system to precisely focus its beam to the size of a coin at a distance of 10 kilometers. The development of Iron Beam was rooted in five years of research and development focused on solid-state lasers. Rafael, with primary funding from the Israeli Ministry of Defense and additional support from the United States, spearheaded the design of this system. An iron beam battery comprises elements like an air defense radar, a command and control unit, and two high-energy laser systems, originally intended to be mobile and operate independently. It was later transformed into a non-mobile system due to concerns related to weight and power availability. This adaptation facilitated integration with the Iron Dome system, reducing overall complexity. The initial plan called for two laser guns producing 100 to 150 kilowatts of power. Israel remains deeply concerned about Iran's suspected nuclear ambitions, a matter that has led to growing tensions between these two nations. The recent unveiling of Iran's Fatah hypersonic missile has captured global attention, primarily due to its remarkable and distinctive capabilities. The Fatah missile, a two-stage solid-fueled creation of Iran, is notable for its impressive range extending up to 1,400 and astonishing terminal velocities ranging from March 13 to March 15. However, what truly sets it apart is its groundbreaking spherical engine warhead, which relies on solid fuel and features a movable nozzle. This innovative design not only enhances its speed, but also endows it with the ability to make precise maneuvers in multiple directions, ensuring effectiveness in various environmental conditions. This advanced hypersolic ballistic missile significantly surpasses the capabilities of traditional ballistic missiles. Its exceptional velocity not only extends its range, but also dramatically reduces the reaction time for potential targets and adversaries making it a formidable addition to Iran's military arsenal. One of the missile's most notable attributes is its remarkable maneuverability. It can operate within and above the Earth's atmosphere, adapting to different atmospheric conditions and altitudes. This adaptability adds a layer of complexity for defense systems attempting to intercept it, as the missile's swift trajectory changes make it a challenging target. Iran boldly claims that this advanced hypersonic ballistic missile can breach all existing anti-missile defense systems, signifying a substantial leap in Iran's missile technology. If these capabilities hold, the Fatah hypersonic missile could pose a significant challenge to global missile defense architecture, potentially even challenging systems like the Iron Dome. The Iron Dome, designed for slower moving threats with predictable trajectories, may face a more complex and less reliable adversary in the Agil Fatah hypersonic missile. 
This development intensifies concerns in the region, adding a new dimension to the security landscape. Israel's military prowess and technological advancements are well known, and the country's latest innovation, the Advanced Laser System, known as the Iron Beam, has further bolstered its reputation. In April 2022, the Israeli Ministry of Defense and Rafael announced that the Iron Beam had successfully intercepted drones, rockets, mortar shells, and anti-tank missiles. This was a significant achievement given the system's operational range, which is highly effective at shorter ranges, spanning from several hundred meters to tens of kilometers. The Iron Beam's success has come at a crucial time, given the concerns about the availability of Iron Dome projectiles for countering attacks. The urgency to deploy the Iron Beam was palpable, and Prime Minister Naftali Bennett declared in February 2022 that Israel intended to deploy the system within a year. However, in October 2022, Rafael suggested that it might take two to three years to achieve full operational deployment of the 100 kilowatts weapon. In May 2023, Rafael unveiled the naval iron beam designed for ship installation. The naval iron beam emits 100 kilowatts of power over several kilometers to protect vessels from threats such as drone swarms and anti-ship missiles. The naval version maintains the same turret dimensions and can be adapted for integration onto ship superstructures or containerized modules, enabling deployment as needed. The naval iron beam is expected to become operational within four to five years and will first be equipped on the Israeli Navy's Sa'ar 6-class corvette. The iron beam's precision and cost efficiency in addressing close-range threats like mortar and rocket attacks are some of the most significant advancements in this system. Its short-range capabilities are particularly noteworthy given the Iron Dome's primary focus on longer distances. With Israel's ongoing conflicts with neighboring nations, the Iron Beam system's contribution to the country's military capabilities is undeniable. The Iron Beam system's cost efficiency is a significant advantage, with the cost of intercepting a target being only a few dollars. A stark departure from the Iron Dome's approximately 100,000 US dollars per interception. This substantial reduction in the cost per interception represents a technological achievement and a significant financial benefit to Israel's defense efforts. Although initial commitments to deploying the Iron Beam system were made in 2020, official confirmation of its operational status has yet to be publicly disclosed. The secrecy surrounding the program may arise from the sensitivity of laser weapon technology and its application in defense systems. Nevertheless, the anticipation for the system's full integration into Israel's missile defense capabilities remains palpable. The Iron Beam system adds substantially to Israel's layered missile defense network, complementing systems like HETS, David Sling, and the Iron Dome. This layered approach ensures comprehensive coverage and adaptability to various missile threats, reflecting Israel's unwavering dedication to safeguarding its territory and its citizens. With the Iron Beam's short-range capabilities, the system provides a strategic advantage in addressing close-range threats like mortar and rocket attacks with exceptional precision and cost efficiency. The Iron Beam system's potential benefits extend beyond Israel's borders. Other countries facing similar threats from short-range projectiles could benefit from this technology. The Iron Beam system represents a significant step forward in laser-based missile defense technology and has the potential to revolutionize missile defense strategies worldwide. ELTA Systems ELTA Systems Limited. ELTA is an Israeli provider of defense products and services, specializing in radar, ELINT, COMINT, C4 ISTAR, electronic warfare, communication, autonomous ground systems, intelligence and cyber products. ELTA, a group and subsidiary of Israel Aerospace Industries, is one of Israel's major defense electronics companies specializing in a variety of fields. The company was established in 1967 and moved to Ashdod as part of Levi 
by Eshkol's policy of industry decentralization. The group operates as a designer and manufacturer of defense systems housed with products based on electromagnetic sensors, radar, electronic warfare and communication, and on other advanced technologies. Elta products are designed for use in intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, and reconnaissance. Istar, early warning and control, homeland security, HLS, self-protection and self-defense, fire control, and cyber defense. Elta operates a worldwide marketing network which includes customer service and after-sales facilities. Although organized internally into groups by application, there is considerable reuse of common technology. Elta is Israel's leading radar house and a design, development, and production center for advanced systems based on radar sensors and technologies. The division systems are designed for imagery intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, air defense, self-defense, target acquisition, and fire control applications. LTA's iMint and Radar Division also has ground and coastal border protection systems, systems for protecting international border crossings, which includes airports, harbors, roads, and railways, commercial aircraft self-protection, systems, SIGINT information gathering systems, focusing on terror infrastructures and urban emergency centers, group web pages, design, development, and production center for advanced SIGINT, EW, and communication systems based on electromagnetic sensors. ELTA SIGINT, EW, and communication division systems are designed for signal intelligence, self-defense, electronic warfare, and communication applications and include advanced data links and SATCOM. The LTA Technologies Division develops technologies providing LTA systems with independent capabilities to manufacture critical super components and subsystems for various applications, such as miniature seed microwave modules, antennas, transmitters, signal processors, etc., as well as special automatic test equipment. In addition, this division constitutes the manufacture, procurement, and logistics center of the ELTA Systems Group. The Raphael System Raphael Advanced Defense Systems Limited is an Israeli defense technology company. It was founded as Israel's national R&D defense laboratory for the development of weapons and military technology within the Israeli Ministry of Defense in 2002. It was incorporated as a limited company. Raphael was established in 1948 as the Science Corps, known by the acronym HEMED, under the leadership of Shlomo Gur. It was renamed the Research and Design Directorate in 1952. David Ben-Gurion decided to split the activities of HEMED into two agencies. The pure scientific research was left with HEMED, while the development of weapons was placed into the new EMET agency. In 1954, Ben-Gurion decided to change the name of EMET to Raphael. It was reorganized as Raphael in 1958. In 1995, Yitzhak Rabin asked Amos Horev, to become chairman of the board of Raphael, following many years in which Horev had served as chairman of Raphael's advisory committee. Horev served as chairman until January 2001. During the early 1990s, Raphael was operating at a loss, peaking in 1995, with a loss of 120 million US dollars on a turnover of 460 million US dollars. Therefore, it was decided to restructure the organization and start operating Raphael as a company. Initially, the new company had three discrete divisions, each operating as a profit center, with a separate balance sheet presented to the newly formed management board. The restructuring was completed in 2002 when Raphael was formally incorporated as a limited company, although still as a government-owned corporation, while maintaining its technological capabilities through an investment of about 10% of turnover in R&D programs. In its first year as a limited company, Raphael earned a 37 million profit on 830 million US dollars in sales. By 2016, Raphael reported annual net profits of 473 million ILS, roughly $130 million, up 3%, compared with ILS 459 million in 2015. New orders in 2016 totaled ILS 10.7 billion, and sales amounted to ILS 8.32 billion, 6% more than in 2015. The company's orders backlog as of the end of 2016 was ILS 21.72 billion, 12% more than at the end of 2015. 
On October 14, 2007, the company changed its name from Raphael Armament Development Authority Limited to Raphael Advanced Defense Systems Limited. The Iron Dome. Iron Dome is an Israeli mobile all-weather air defense system developed by Raphael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aerospace Industries. The system is designed to intercept and destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells fired from distances of 4 to 70 kilometers away and whose trajectory would take them to an Israeli-populated area. From 2011 to 2021, the United States contributed a total of 1.6 billion U.S. dollars to the Iron Dome defense system, with another 1 billion U.S. dollars approved by the U.S. Congress in 2022. Iron Dome was declared operational and initially deployed on 27th March 2011, near Beersheba. On 7th April 2011, the system successfully intercepted a rocket launched from Gaza for the first time. On March 10, 2012, the Jerusalem Post reported that the system shot down 90% of rockets launched from Gaza that would have landed in populated areas. In late 2012, Israel said that it hoped to increase the range of Iron Dome's interceptions from a maximum of 70 to 250 kilometers and make it more versatile so that it could intercept rockets coming from two directions simultaneously. In November 2012, official statements indicated that it had intercepted over 400 rockets. By late October 2014, the Iron Dome systems had intercepted over 1,200 rockets. In addition to their land-based deployment, it was reported in 2017 that Iron Dome batteries would in future be deployed at sea on say R6 class corvettes to protect offshore gas platforms in conjunction with Israel's Barak 8 missile system. Hezbollah, based in Lebanon, fired rockets into northern Israel population centers in the 1990s, posing a security challenge for the Israel Defense Forces. Israel had floated the idea of its own short-range anti-missile system, but U.S. defense officials cautioned that it would be doomed to fail. In 2004, the idea for Iron Dome gained momentum with the installation of Brigadier General Daniel Gold as the head of the Research and Development Bureau of the Israel Defense Forces, IDF. Gold was a strong backer of the anti-missile project, even skirting army contracting regulations to secure financing. He also helped persuade key politicians to support the project. During the 2006 Second Lebanon War, approximately 4,000 Hezbollah-fired rockets, the great majority of which were short-range Katyusha rockets, landed in northern Israel, including in Haifa, the country's third-largest city. The rocket barrage killed 44 Israeli civilians and caused some 250,000 Israeli citizens to evacuate and relocate to other parts of Israel, while an estimated 1 million Israelis were confined in or near bomb shelters during the conflict. To the south, more than 8,000 projectiles, estimated at 4,000 rockets and 4,000 mortar bombs, were fired indiscriminately into Israel from Gaza between 2000 and 2008, principally by Hamas. Almost all of the rockets fired were Qassams launched by 122mm grad launchers smuggled into the Gaza Strip, giving longer range than other launch methods. Nearly a million Israelis living in the south were within rocket range, posing a serious security threat to the country and its citizens. In February 2007, Defense Minister Amir Peretz selected Iron Dome as Israel's defense against this short-range rocket threat. Since then, the 210 million US dollar system has been developed by Rafael Advanced Defense Systems, working jointly with the IDF. In May 2021, it was estimated that Palestinian militant groups had an arsenal of about 30,000 rockets and mortar bombs in Gaza, potential targets when fired for Iron Dome. Range varies widely and guidance systems are lacking, but accuracy has improved over the years. There are estimates of the numbers and types of rockets, and their range and payload. The system is designed to counter short-range rockets and 155 artillery shells with a range of up to 70 kilometers. According to its manufacturer, Iron Dome will operate day and night under adverse weather conditions and can respond to multiple threads simultaneously. The typical air defense missile battery consists of a radar unit, missile control unit, and several launchers, all located at the same site. 
Conversely, Iron Dome is built to deploy in a scattered pattern. Each launcher, containing 20 interceptors, is independently deployed and operated remotely via a secure wireless connection. Reportedly, each Iron Dome battery is capable of protecting an urban area of approximately 150 square kilometers. The initial funding and development of the Iron Dome system was provided and undertaken by Israel. This allowed for the deployment of the first two Iron Dome systems. Subsequently, funding for additional Iron Dome systems along with repeated funding for the supply of the interception missiles has been provided by the United States. From 2011 to 2021, the U.S. contributed a total of 1.6 billion U.S. dollars to the Iron Dome defense system, with another 1 billion U.S. dollars approved by the U.S. Congress in 2022. Funding for the production and deployment of these additional Iron Dome batteries and interceptor missiles was approved by the United States Congress after being requested by President Barack Obama in 2010. In May 2010, the White House announced that Obama would seek $205 million from Congress in his 2011 budget to spur the production and deployment of additional Iron Dome batteries. White House spokesman Tommy Viator stated that the president recognizes the threat missiles and rockets fired by Hamas and Hezbollah pose to Israelis and has therefore decided to seek funding from Congress to support the production of Israel's short-range rocket defense system called Iron Dome. This would be the first direct U.S. investment in the project. Such financial assistance could expedite the completion of the defensive system, which has long been delayed by budgetary shortfalls. A few days later, on May 20, 2010, the U.S. House of Representatives approved the funding in a 410 to 4 vote. The bill, the United States Israel Missile Defense Cooperation and Support Act, was sponsored by Representative Glenn C. Nye of Virginia. This money was expected to be included in the 2011 budget. Once the money was received in 2011, it still took a further 18 months before the additional batteries were delivered to the Air Force. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.